Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Monday, December 7th, 2020, and today we're going to be talking about the two Georgia runoff elections and taking a look now at our first 2020 Georgia runoff election polls. What does this mean? Essentially, they've taken the average of all of the polls that have been done in the Georgia runoff elections and they've averaged the results. And I know what you're thinking. I'm thinking it too. Why are we worried about polls after such an abysmal year for polling data across the country? But Georgia was actually an exception. I'm going to show you the polling data for the presidential race in Georgia, and if you take a look at it, Biden was up 1.2%. Well, he actually won the state by 0.3%, so it's off by roughly a percentage point. Nobody said polls were 100% accurate in the sense they would get the margin perfect. They were accurate in terms of who they predicted in Georgia, and they were only off well within the margin of error, which is typically three to five uh, points. And this is well within it being a one point difference, less than that, actually less than a one point difference, 0.9% between the polling result and the actual result. And then if you take a look at the uh, forecast from 538 as well, you will realize that now, you know, uh, well, not necessarily now, November 3rd, right up leading up to the election, they've always had David Perdue above 50%. And why does 50% matter? Well, essentially, if a candidate does not receive 50% or more of the vote, they are entering into a runoff, assuming that no other candidate does either. You know, the runoff elections in Georgia and a number of southern states are formed in a way that uh, it ensures that everyone is able to have a final say in the final two candidates. That way, you can avoid the idea of spoiler candidates uh, because it's very similar to ranked choice voting. I think it takes away a lot of guilt from certain candidates, but this doesn't apply to the presidential level. So that's why Biden won the state outright. But for Senate elections, they are free to hold their own rules and how they elect senators, and that's exactly what they're doing. So essentially... <clears throat> In the state of Georgia, we see that David Perdue was expected to get 49.3% of the vote. That actually was only 0.4% off from what he actually got. John Ossoff was expected to receive 49% of the vote. That was only off by a percentage point, I believe 1.1%. So overall, in this regular election seat, it was expected to go to a runoff. In fact, in a number of scenarios, there was a possibility of a Purdue victory through a runoff or a Ossoff victory, an Ossoff victory through a runoff. Uh, so the, Oss the, the uh, runoff election is was predicted and it looks like it's going to be a close race and i think that now we can actually take a look at the latest numbers from the georgia senate races and i think we can actually trust them now i could be disproven on january 5th and i we could see the possibility of some of these polls underestimating republican support the republican party has outnumbered the democratic party in fundraising four to one already so the democratic party still has a lot of things to you know has an uphill climb in order to win both of these Senate races. I personally believe the GOP is favored to win both as it stands today. Every day I reevaluate, I take a look at the data, and while the numbers are still saying that Ossoff and Warnock are expected to win, a lot of these undecided, specifically in these battleground states, do break heavily for the president's party, and I think that's exactly what's going to happen on January 5th. And we also know that the Democratic Party rarely ever turns out in special elections, rarely ever turns out in uh, runoff elections. And that could be just because many Democrats could be complacent at this point. Now that Biden is elected to the presidency, it would be very different if this could control the Senate when there would be a Republican president. But a lot of Democrats also do understand the stakes of this to these two Senate races, meaning they would overall determine control. And I think that the Republican Party understands that as well. But the problem is, if you saw my video yesterday, the Republican Party in Georgia is imploding. They're fighting. Brian Kemp's approval rating has taken a 10-point dip. Uh, you know, Brad Raffensperger and a number of Republican statewide officials are going against the president. The president is then vilifying them. We are seeing Kelly Loeffler and David Perdue, Leffler, sorry, and David Perdue uh, start to delegitimize the election results, not start, continue to delegitimize the election results. And when the electors vote in about a week, we probably still won't see the president concede because Congress does have to certify these results. So this could go all the way up to Inauguration Day, to be completely honest, even if Congress does it. And I really think that that's something that is going to be very uh, negative for the Republican Party. So they are facing their own battles. They are facing their own infights, and it's happening in a very you know bad state. They just lost the Georgia state on the presidential race for the first time since 92. For the first time since 92, I wasn't even born when Georgia had voted for a Democratic Party, the Democratic Party on the presidential level, uh, to give you an idea of how long that was. So looking at the Georgia Senate runoff elections, the Republican Party cannot afford to lose both of these seats. And they're doing everything they can to lose both of these seats, which I think is just fascinating because this infighting is helping absolutely no one. But what do the numbers tell us? If I was telling you this based off a number basis, take out of my uh, belief about who's going to win these races, who's ahead? Well, the Democrats are. 
The Democrats are ahead. John Ossoff leads David Perdue by just a little bit under a percentage point. Raphael Warnock does considerably better by expanding John Ossoff's lead by double at 2.2% above Kelly Loeffler. Now, Raphael Warnock was always expected to outperform uh, uh, John Ossoff just because David Perdue is a well-known name across the state of Georgia. He's the incumbent elected Republican. There's a difference there. Kelly Loeffler was appointed around a year ago. Actually, I think a year ago would be uh, January 5th. And well, she was appointed back then, but she was sworn in January 5th um, or January 4th or 6th, one day after or one day before the runoff election. I think it's actually January 6th, but that's besides the point. Essentially, Kelly Loeffler was never elected by the citizens of Georgia, but both of these senators are now under fire, under scrutiny because of their supposed insider trading. Just because they were cleared of all wrongdoing does not mean they didn't do anything wrong. We all know how systems like that work, especially for politicians, especially for rich politicians. And I think that when you're looking at David Perdue and Kelly Loeffler, neither of them give off the impression that they are regular Americans. Kelly Loeffler, combined with her husband, is worth over half a billion dollars. And I understand that Donald Trump was able to appeal to a lot of these voters, but he was a good orator. At the rally, you know, Kelly Loeffler, especially at the debate, she came across as robotic. She came across as someone who was uninspiring to the crowd. I think David Perdue is more inspiring than her, which is exactly why he has a better chance at winning. But both of them are, you know, the reason why I think they're dipping in the polls is because they are holding on to Donald Trump. Both of them started off with an advantage. David Perdue was up four points against John Ossoff. Kelly Loeffler was up one point against Raphael Warnock. Since we've seen President Trump delegitimize the election results and Kelly Loeffler and David Perdue jump onto that bandwagon as well, it is bringing them down. Now, not to say that these voters won't just suck it up and vote for them on election day. Georgia is still inherently a Republican state. They have numerous Republican statewide officials. They elect more Republicans than Democrats uh, on the House level. They have two Republican incumbents in the Senate, so it's going to be difficult to oust both of them at the same time. Just because it went blue once on the presidential level does not mean that it's going to be uh, a solid Democratic state in the future, or maybe not even a lean Democratic state in the future. It is always going to be competitive no matter where you're looking at, but for right now, the Republican Party has the upper hand. And I think that the Republican Party in Georgia is Romney-esque, is McCain-esque. And not to say that any Republican could win without the Trump base. That is impossible. You cannot win without it. But the fact that we're seeing two Republicans who are trying to ride the coattails of a failed president on the, in the state of Georgia, I think is interesting. I think it's fascinating that this is their winning strategy to take uh, a firm grasp of whatever Donald Trump is putting out there and putting it on their campaign platform. And I think that's just a very interesting thing to do given that uh, the severe reaction that would have from a lot of these voters when david purdue is telling those biden purdue voters that essentially telling them that joe biden stole the election many of them would feel invalidated they aren't too trusting in president trump there were a number of crossover voters 0.4 percent exactly uh that moved from actually i believe 0.7 percent that voted for joe biden but also voted for david purdue and i think that is something to note as well because when you're looking at that number, uh, or at least voted for David Perdue but did not vote for Donald Trump, uh, I believe 0.3% of them voted for Biden and then David Perdue. But in an election that was decided by 12,000 votes out of 5 million, 12,000 votes out of 5 million, every single vote matters. And when you are now seeing, you know, David Perdue and Kelly Loeffler, Republicans that may have been Romney-esque or McCain-esque prior to, maybe not Kelly Loeffler, but David Perdue, absolutely. And now you're seeing them you know, involve themselves in these conspiracy theories, involve themselves into unproven uh, allegations of voter fraud, that's not going to resonate well with the people who just ousted an incumbent president who they didn't like because of his rhetoric. They didn't like because of his policies. And now that they are, you know, not shifting anywhere closer to the center than they need to be, um, it, it is going to be a very troubling pathway ahead because these should be safe Republican seats. To be completely honest with you, maybe not safe, but likely. I think if David Perdue and Kelly Loeffler work this out in a very a good way if they actually campaign right if they distance themselves from trump but still retained his base they would have won both of these seats they will will have won both of these seats by likely margins but i don't think that's the case i think the democratic party has a real shot because of donald trump he is the gift that keeps on giving for the democratic party at this point because yes donald trump helped down ballot republicans i think that's undeniable but also in this specific state you know, he lost this state on the presidential level, and he's going back and saying there was voter fraud. He's attacking uh, an incumbent Republican governor who won more of the vote than he did for, uh, versus 2018 uh, and 2020. And when you think about the approval rating of Brian Kemp, it's taking a dip. But also, you have to think about that 77% of the Republican Party that still approves of Brian Kemp that may be questioning the loyalty of David Perdue to the voters versus Donald Trump of Kelly Loeffler to the voters versus Donald Trump. And both of these candidates 
I don't think either of them are super strong. I don't think John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock are tier A candidates either. I think both of them are very strong for the states that they come from. But let's say we had Stacey Abrams on the ticket for one of these races. I think the Democratic Party would be a tad bit more confident in some of their results. And every little bit matters, especially in Georgia, as we've seen this election. But both of these polling uh, numbers are now telling us that the lead has been taken away from the Republican Party, which was, was uh, point four, plus four for David Perdue and plus one for Kelly Loeffler, which is now plus two for Raphael Warnock and plus one for John Ossoff. This should not have happened. Both of these seats should have been Republican seats. I don't want to see anyone talk about how, you know, because the Georgia goes to the Republican Party on January 5th, that we are seeing signs of a red wave. That is simply untrue because the Republican Party is the incumbent party. I'd get it if it was an open seat, if it was a seat that was, you know, held by a Democrat previously or has a Democrat incumbent. That makes sense. You could say, you could argue that point. But also, if the Republicans win it, okay. That's what was expected. That's how it should have gone if both of these candidates were doing as well as they should have. But neither of them are. Kelly Loeffler specifically has clung on to Donald Trump for such a long period of time. We can actually take a look at where she was forecasted on the Senate level uh, in a special election. And Raphael Warnock was the favorite to win. Uh, let me go back here for a second. I missed it. Uh, but Raphael Warnock was expected to win in a runoff. 63% chance that he wins in a runoff because of how poor Kelly Loeffler was. She started off with the advantage. The Republican Party at one point had an 83% chance of victory, and this flipped overnight practically. I mean, it went from a 72% chance October 13th to a 51% chance for the Democrats October 14th, finished off election 2020 with a 63% chance. And look at these numbers. You know, it was always supposed to go Warnock, Loeffler, Collins, and that's what the average was telling us. And at the end of the day, that's exactly what happened. And one poll in particular was very, very interesting. I don't know if they have it here, but it was Survey USA, which got it spot on, spot on, off by less than a percentage for all three candidates. And I think that is just fascinating. Uh, and they got the presidential race right. They also got the uh, Senate regular election with David Perdue correctly. And now they are predicting based off these numbers. We can actually see them here. They are now predicting a rated pollster, the only a rated poll we've seen out of this state. They're now predicting an awesome victory plus two and a Warnock victory plus six. I don't think that that's exactly what's going to happen. I think it'll be a lot closer than that, but I think that it's just interesting to see. Um, but also Trafalgar Group, which is a Republican pollster, shows Leffler ahead by five and Ossoff ahead by one. That doesn't make sense. I think that they are just skewing that towards the Trump base because Leffler has been a lot more firm in her uh, support of President Trump than David Perdue. Both of them obviously fully accepting his endorsement, but Leffler has been the Trump candidate from day one. David Perdue has been the more moderate Republican. So that could just be skewing to his base, but the adjusted leaders actually show Ossoff ahead by three, according to Trafalgar Group, and then a tie in terms of the uh, Senate special election. And I think those results should actually be reversed based off all of the other data that we see. But just looking at the averages, I just think that uh, we could be taking a look at very, very close races and polls in Georgia weren't off by that large of margins. And I think that it's actually trustable at this point. Um, I'm not going to say that for many other states. I think there's maybe one or two other states across the country. You're not going to see me discuss them as much, especially with the upcoming 2022 midterms. It could be a redeemable year. It could be same uh, the same thing that we saw in 2016 and 2020. 2018 was a, re a redeemable year for pollsters, but uh, 2020 obviously was not. But maybe that's due to the pandemic. 538 actually discussed how uh, you know there's a number of issues as to why the polls were significantly wrong this election. Um, not just you know regular errors, but also just the fact that you know we're amidst the global pandemic. Exit polling data can't accurately be taken. There are a number of things that could be impacting the uh, polling results. But Georgia, for whatever reason was correct. And right now, the overall averages show John Ossoff ahead by one point and Raphael Warnock ahead by two points. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my post-2020 election videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all later today.